Hi, it's Derek again from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to part three of Specialist Flu Systems. Today we're going to look at flus in voids, so let's get on with it. Now, what do we mean by a flu in a void? Well, basically, it's a flu system that's been boxed in from a room sealed fan assisted appliance. That doesn't mean back boilers or condensing boilers where they've got the specialist flu system that's been put down a chimney or even a flu system where it's a flat roof and it's just literally a vertical flu system going through the roof and you can see the joints. That's not what's considered a flu in a void. Now in parts one and two of these videos, I'll put some links in the description down below, we talked about SE ducts and U ducts. They don't come under this flus in the voids, but the new uh, versions of the flu system, so the communal flu systems or the CFS flu systems, they could come under this flus in voids, so you need to follow the guidance from that. And the guidance we can find stuff in is this one, which is the technical bulletin from Gas Safe of 008 edition three. And again, we've got the 5440 and approved document J. They will give us more information about the flues in voids. This is a flue system we found when we were replacing a boiler which had been boxed in. And you can see they actually used bricks instead of clips to hold this flue up. So this is a good example of what you can find with a flue in a void. From the 1st of January 2013, any concealed room sealed fan draft boiler flue system where its effectiveness cannot be confirmed must be classed as at risk. So this has been out a very, very long time now and engineers going out servicing boilers shouldn't be seeing flues not installed correctly. But if you do find these flues not installed correctly and we're classifying it as at risk, is a customer going to allow you to turn it off? Well, probably not because on an at risk situation you just turn off at the gas supply but if the customer doesn't want you to turn it off, as a gas engineer, there's not a lot you can do because we're classifying it as at risk. But obviously if it was immediately dangerous, that's completely different. If the customer doesn't allow you to turn it off because we've got products of combustion, more than 10 parts per million CO coming into the room, then we can classify it as ID or immediately dangerous. And if they don't allow us to turn it off, then we're getting in touch with Caden or our gas emergency service. For us in Manchester, it's Caden. Now then, how have we overcome flues in voids? Well, basically, we've got to install inspection hatches. Now, this is what the inspection hatches have to be. They have to be a minimum of 300 mil square, so you can get your head through and have a look. They are specialist hatches though, fireproof. So it keeps the integrity of the building. So you can't just put a big hole in and then put a bit of plasterboard over the front. Also, if it is isn't boxing in, I've got a million screws in it, and it's a piece of wood and it's just screwed all over the place, that's not an inspection hatch. We need to have these specialist inspection hatches. So where do we install these inspection hatches? Well, in this situation here, where we've just got the flu going straight through numerous rooms with lots of joints in there, we need to make sure these inspection hatches are no more than 1.5 meters away from a joint. So we can get again our heads up into the space and inspect these joints. So if you can see this one here, we can inspect this one and we can inspect this and this. Now it doesn't say that you have to be able to work from that inspection hatch because you're never going to be able to if it's only 300 millimetres squared. Then you would have to take all the boxing out if you saw any leaks, but it's only for inspection purposes. And again, you can see this one here, we've got a joint, we're still within 1.5 metres of there and we can see the end of the terminal. So that's in that situation. 
Now, what if we have a boiler where we've got bends in these um, voids? So you would put the hatch right where the bend is, so you could see these two joints here. And again, it can't be more than 1.5 meters away from the joint of the boiler. Same for this one in the middle here, we would have to be no more than 1.5 meters away. So if we've got the hatch there, again, no more than 1.5 meters, right on the elbow and from the end of the terminal. Now there's a recommendation here what says basically if we have got this scenario then we should be recommending to the customer that they have CO alarms installed to BSEM 50291 and install them to the manufacturer's instructions but install them in every room where they flew passes through if it can be so like if it's a bedroom then you could put the alarms in but obviously it went through a shower room or a bathroom you won't be installing one there so that's the inspection hatches now then what checks are gas engineers expected to do when they are servicing these boilers with a flue in a void well the first thing we will be doing is a visual inspection along the void to make sure that there are no signs of stainage or water leaking. The next thing would to be go outside and have a look at the flue terminal and see if you can see all the plume coming out. So now you should be able to judge how much plume is coming out of a boiler when it's running on full tilt. We also need to carry out the test from regulation 26.9. So we'll need to carry out those and we will need to flue gas analyse the appliance on high and low settings and making sure that it's to the manufacturer's instructions. We also need to do a flue integrity test on there if we can do. So what's the flue integrity test? Well basically what we're going to be doing is checking the air coming into the appliance. So we need to check our oxygen levels first. So our oxygen levels need to be equal to or greater than 20.6. Not 20.9 like a lot of you guys think it is, because there's only 20.9 oxygen in the atmosphere. And also, if you are getting oxygen levels less than 20.6, you might not have 20.6 anyway. So there is another result we can look at, and that's our CO2, and we need levels of less than 0.2%. So that's what we're looking for with flu integrity. Oxygen equal to or greater than 20.6 and our CO2 levels of less than 0.2. That's the flue integrity test, and they're the tests you're gonna require when you're checking these flues, whether they've got hatches or whether they haven't got hatches. Now, finally, I want to have a look at this. So this is on the back of the Technical Bulletin 008 Edition 3, and there's a nice little flow chart here, Appendix 2, what gives you guidance on what to do when you find a flue in a void. So let's check this out and see what it's gotta say. So obviously here is the start. So if we come down to this next one here, it says the chimney flue system concealed. If we went to no, then it would be subject to appropriate operation safety checks. And you're basically gonna be leaving it connected because you're carrying out your 26.9. But if it isn't, we need to come down to this one. Is the chimney flue system routed through adjacent property? If we said yes, which it isn't allowed nowadays, it says, can access be gained on the adjacent property? If you go yes, then you come back to here. And it says, are there acceptable means of examining the entire chimney flue system i.e. inspection hatches installed. If we come to this one, because it says no, it says, is a COSSVM installed, which stands for Carbon Monoxide Safety Shutoff Void Monitoring System. If we say yes, we move to this one, and as it says, is it installed and working correctly? And we go, no. Then we've got to class it as at risk. And if we go yes, then we're just doing our 26 nine checks. Now, if we said no, well, we need to come down to this one. And it says, does a ceiling enclosure indicate 
any signs of distress along with the root of the chimney flue system which cannot be attributed to the cause, e.g. water leaks, etc. Again, if we say no, it's at risk. And if we say yes, then we say classify as immediately dangerous. The fixer do not use warning label. Complete the warning notice with the responsible person's permission and disconnect the boiler. Then it also says complete a RIDOR 11.2 report. So that's basically what this chart does and makes it very easy for a gas engineer to follow and to be able to classify whether it is immediately dangerous or rat risk according to this appendix too. And that's the end of this video on flues in voids. So if you've liked this video, why don't you give us that old thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. All we've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out down below the other videos. Catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.